Hello, everyone. This is once again Radio Rothbard. I'm Jeff Deist. Most of you know the man with whom I am speaking, Dr. Seyfedin Amus. Uh, he is, of course, most famously known for his book, The Bitcoin Standard. But in addition, he holds a PhD from Columbia University. We don't hold that against him. Uh, he is an economist at the Lebanese American University, but he's currently spending some time in Canada working on, among other things, a project which has now taken the form of Saifedean.com, S-A-I-F-E-D-E-A-N, Saifedean, his first name, .com, which is going to feature an opportunity for you to learn not only more about Bitcoin in his book, but also to take courses from him, attend seminars with him. And this is the sort of thing that we are seeing amongst more entrepreneurial PhDs and academics, people like Per Byland, who are branching out from just the university teaching model and seeking tenure uh, and really finding popular audiences. So all of that said, uh, safe, and I'm allowed to call him safe. You guys all have to call him Dr. Amus. Uh, I mean, first and foremost, education is, is so dismal that... A, a guy like you has to have courses online for 50 bucks after all these billions have been spent on in universities. Very true. Very true. Um, in my defense, you know, Jeff, uh, I do have a degree from Columbia, but I'm not in bad company there. Uh, a certain Murray Rothbard, I presume you've heard of him, he <laughs> a PhD from Columbia. Well, we don't hold it against him either. Exactly. So it's fine. You know, it's uh, I, I, it's it's like a scar uh, that we carry with pride. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, but yes, you're absolutely correct. The state of education is dismal. Um, and I think, you know, the, 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 the diagnosis I would offer is that uh, since education is largely state-run pretty much everywhere in the world, particularly higher education, uh, you know, the... Um, the, the the consumer experience has become dismal. Uh, the educational system runs to the benefit of bureaucrats who uh, sign the research grants for one another and who are able to, uh, you know, keep funding going to their favorite causes. And so it's just a system of uh, securing funding from the government printing press rather than securing the uh, satisfaction of the consumer. And so we see, uh, you know, I, I've joked about this on Twitter before that uh, the hundreds of billions of dollars spent on subsidies and research for higher education for many decades. And you look at what universities have to say or what university economists have to say about Bitcoin, and it consists essentially of uh, misconstrued, misconstrued stories about some fantasy bubbles in tulips in Holland in the 17th century or whatever. That's the extent of uh, the university analysis seems to be to just shout tulips, tulips, tulips at something that's uh, grown so much over 10 years and uh, Ha has grown to have such a massive computational infrastructure around the world. Um, they insist it's just uh, another uh, bubble of uh, similar proportions to the um, tulip bubble, which lasted only a few months and uh, is extremely incomparable to what's happening with Bitcoin. And I think, you know, Bitcoin is a, a huge slap in the face of the academic establishment because the academic establishment in economics is fundamentally built around the premise of government management of the money supply. It's um, meant to answer the questions of how best we can manage the money supply. It never questions whether we should or should not manage it. And Bitcoin offers this real life refutation of the idea that you need the state to manage money. And so academics are stumped and people are interested in finding out more. And uh, I think that's uh, what led me to find this entrepreneurial opportunity that I could be teaching a large global audience of people who are interested in these things thanks to the internet, without having to go through all of the formalities of a university system, because in a university system, it's becoming harder and harder to teach those things and to have the freedom to uh, experiment and to uh, talk about new topics. And of course, you went out and found a popular publishing house and you wrote for a popular audience in your book, The Bitcoin Standard. But uh, perversely, the incentives for most academics, uh, tenured or seeking tenure, is to write goofy academic articles that are read by hardly anybody. 
That is very true. Yeah. Um, in my case, my, my publisher was actually uh, an academic publisher, even though it's a bit of a popular uh, Yeah, type. I mean, I, I think of Wiley as publishing for lay readers as well. Yeah. I mean, they do they do both, and I think my book benefited from that. Uh, but uh, it's, uh, it's, it's uh, publishing also, I think, is an industry that uh, needs to change massively, and uh, the internet is, is disrupting them. But... Uh, it's still in much better shape than in education. You know, books actually do get on the shelves, but in education, people, uh, it's just so completely separated from market pressure that people go into universities, spend, uh, get into debt for many dozens of thousands of dollars and graduate with no skills whatsoever, no useful information. So one of the interesting things about Bitcoin is that it has gotten people talking more for, for the first time in a long time about theoretical economics. In other words, because of Bitcoin, because of this applied technology, people are, are talking ab about things like what is money, what is value, from where does value come, th these kinds of things. It's, it's almost like it took something to shake up uh, the economics profession and get people talking about this stuff again. There's no more theory. I, I mean, this is – so in, in some ways, Bitcoin forces people to struggle with theory. Yes, and it's you know it's it's something that we up until two thousand and nine would fight about uh, on papers and books and on the internet, but we never had uh, real life examples of uh, uh, monetary uh, goods being born in front of our eyes and uh, growing in the, in this way. So it's, it's a fascinating uh, real life experiment, and it's amazing because it's uh, you know it's it's a real life uh, living reputation refutation of. The notion that government management of money supply is necessary because – or – and also the, the notion that the growth in the money supply at a particular rate is in any way necessary because if you look at the Bitcoin economy, the supply grows now at 3 4%. Um, and you know the size of the economy has grown over the past 10 years far larger than the growth in the supply of money, but it has, does not seem to have restrained the growth of the network. So the idea that you need more money for an economy to grow is refuted every day that Bitcoin continues to grow. So it's uh, uh, making people ask a lot of questions uh, on, on these topics. And I think it's no coincidence that uh, amongst uh, amongst Bitcoiners, the ideas of Austrian economics are becoming more and more popular. And you know, my book is becoming more popular because it has, you know, uh, Austrian economics has the answer for those questions. Yes. It does make sense that you don't need to expand the money supply for the economy to grow. We can have a money supply that doesn't expand. It it, it, it can work, and here we see it with Bitcoin. And I think it's uh, it's 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 a terribly exciting time because uh, the internet allows us to just basically reestablish education and research and scholarship in the Austrian tradition all over the world. Uh, without having to go through all of the uh, government-controlled academic institutions, we can just do everything online. Do you get pushback, or, or do you ever regret devoting so much to your book? In, in fact, if I recall, the first seven chapters are really about economic theory and history. Um, yeah, well, I mean, uh, I've gotten a lot of jokes about it, but I don't think uh, many people um, hated that. I think uh, people seem to have enjoyed it. And, you know, people tell me that, you know, they usually when they expect to read things on Bitcoin, they expect, you know, this uh, – fluffy marketing material about all of this uh, futuristic stuff and how we're going to revolution everything revolutionize everything with blockchain technology and my book is obviously very different from that so it's a bit of a slap in the face to walk in and start reading about uh, old dead austrian economists instead of uh, futuristic uh, utopias but i think uh, no I, th I think people generally enjoyed it i think it's uh, the, the, there are a lot of very valuable books describing the uh, technical aspects of bitcoin and i couldn't have done a good job uh, doing that but i think the the, the economic analysis um I, I I believe was valuable, and I think it's it, it's it's in a sense of indication of the Austrian school. It's why no mainstream economist is able to write anything coherent about Bitcoin that explains what's happening with Bitcoin or that sets out clear expectations and predictions of uh, why they think it should fail or how it would fail. You know, all we hear is just people joking about tulips. That there's no serious scholarship that can come out of the mainstream tradition on mm. this question. Yeah, I, I recall you and I speaking offline one time. I want to get your thoughts on this today. I'm going to say the Mises Institute was right. We, we were right not to promote or hype Bitcoin 
uh, eight years ago or whenever. And, and in a sense, we're still right. I mean, imagine some kid comes to one of our conferences and takes the $5,000 his grandmother gave him and puts it all into Bitcoin. <laughs> and then we hear from his grandmother. I mean, we were right. Do you agree? Yeah, I agree. I think, you know, um, the Mises Institute is doing you know, something extremely valuable by putting all of that Austrian economics material there. But um, I, I don't see why you should be uh, uh, cheering <laughs> on for one particular uh, choice of the free market in terms of money. You know, the, um, I, I, I believe you're doing a great job in terms of spreading knowledge and awareness that is helpful for people to understand Bitcoin. But, you know, you don't want to cross into the... Um, uh, territory of Bitcoin cheerleading. I struggle with that myself. I'm always trying to tell people, you know, I'm not trying to get you to buy Bitcoin. I don't care if you buy Bitcoin. I'm not here to promote Bitcoin. And it's, uh, it's, it's, you know, you, you, you don't want to be in that position because people can lose money. And that's not the point. I think it's, uh, it's more important to be educating about it. So I agree with you. But the other thing is, we, if we think back to the hype at, at one point, I mean, it doesn't make any sense that every time you go buy a sandwich at Starbucks, this is recorded on an electronic ledger somewhere and that and that it takes up server space forever and ever. That's not a transaction that's that's meaningful or that's ever going to be challenged. We don't need Bitcoin for that. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. And this uh, the, the, the the way that Bitcoin was promoted, that you know everything is going to be instantaneous and free forever, um, that this is this magic technology that has gotten rid of trade-offs forever, I think is... Uh, uh, you know, it's uh, it was over exaggerated. It was um, done by people who didn't quite see how the economic scarcity of the system would work because block space is scarce and there's a limit to it. And so, uh, yeah, Bit Bitcoin has uh, is likely not going to evolve in that manner in which everyone is able to uh, have all of their transactions and their coffees recorded forever. But uh, it still offers an enormous amount of uh, value as a uh, monetary asset and it seems to be growing more and more as a uh, settlement asset rather than a final transaction payment network and that's really one of the key points in my book so you're going to start launching some of your own courses again through your website safetydean.com including one uh, an introduction to anom economics that's going to ba be based around man economy and state you're going to have a, a course called hard questions on hard money and and most immediately you're going to have a course called the bitcoin standard the same name as your book and it's going to start live uh, later in July, July 22nd, to be uh, exact. It's only $50, which compared to what people uh, spend on <laughs> books and all kinds of things is nothing. So the, um, the the way that I'm thinking of it is that as as a uh, an educator, um, you know, if you look at the uh, university system in the U.S. where we have good data, you see over the past 50 years, the tuition fees have skyrocketed. And you look at university uh, professor pay, it hasn't actually skyrocketed. While um, if you look at the number of professors per student or how much time each student gets to spend in a classroom with a professor, a full, a full professor or uh, someone with a Ph.D., it has not gone up. So where is all that tuition money going? And the answer is it is going to the bureaucracy. It is going to the administrative uh, uh, arm of the educational uh, industrial complex, if you want. It's it's all of those people who are able to assign research grants and government grants. And, you know, there, there was a time in which administrative duties were extremely important in the operation of a university. But I think that time has well passed us now that we have uh, all of these uh, wonderful online tools for productivity that we can utilize. And so with pretty basic software, um, for calendars and uh, uh, online uh, webinars, you know, I could, for just a few hundred dollars of signing up for these services every month, I could essentially do everything that a university allows me to do, but even more efficiently because I can do it online. And I just essentially eliminate the middleman of all of these bureaucrats at the university. And I remember this, you know, when you're at a university, so much of your time is taken up every day um, as a professor with dealing with all of these bureaucrats at the university whose only raison d'etre, you know, the only reason they're there, the only reason they turn up and take up your time is that they need 
to keep making work in order to justify their job. So they're always asking us to fill out forms and, you know, write reports and do uh, all sorts of uh, work for the university. And it's all, you know, reports nobody reads and uh, forms that don't matter for anything. But, you know, that's how they get to keep their job. So much of the university system is just all of that fake make work that you would expect to see in any kind of organization where the price system doesn't function. And uh, that's that's what happens with universities. And that's why, you know, students spend a lot of time and money and learn little and professors also spend an enormous amount of time at universities and don't earn very much and i think you know the the, the internet is just allowing us to completely disrupt that and i'm taking um, you know i'm i'm thinking that this that this chance of uh, trying to reach this audience of uh, people who are more and more interested in Austrian economics because of Bitcoin, because of the rise of Bitcoin, I think gives us a good opportunity to start building for a, a larger online educational uh, uh, infrastructure, really, for teaching Austrian economics. Hopefully, in a few years, you know, this website will have had an, you know, uh, will, will have accumulated several courses on several topics on Austrian economics. Eventually, you know, as you were saying, uh, I start with man economy and state, but I hope to develop eight or ten courses uh, that would be the equivalent of a major in uh, economics from a university and for about a, less than a tenth of the price. Well, I think it's a fantastic project. Of course, ladies and gentlemen, we have a lot of our own courses at Mises.org on our academy page. Uh, we're, we're always adding new courses. We don't, to my recollection, have a Bitcoin course. So if you're interested in going farther further into the Bitcoin standard, the book and the, and the meaning and the theory behind it. Uh, Saifedean, Dr. Amus will be starting a course on July 22nd, which is just a few weeks away. 10-week uh, course, July 22nd to September 23rd. You can go to Saifedean, S-A-I-F-E-D-E-A-N.com to find out more about it. And all I can say, Safe, is that we really, we wish you the best with this. Uh, we hope it's exceedingly successful. And we just want to let a, th a thousand flowers bloom. I mean, we, we want people to find the truth and find good content wherever they do. And, and so we, we certainly don't view you as a competitor, but, but a friend and a fellow traveler. And ladies and gentlemen, you should check out his site and stay with us at Radio Rothbard. Thanks, Safe. Thank you so much, Jeff. And I definitely uh, don't see this as a, a competition. You know, the world needs a lot more people educating uh, on Austrian economics. There's far more room for just uh, uh, for more people. For more content like this, visit Mises.org.